I'd like to welcome you today to the A to Z of character building. My name is Barry J. McDonald, and over the next hour or so, I am going to show you a simple system of creating believable characters, um, making um, them more realistic and more than the actual just the the flat version that you see on the page, making them more than just a collection of words, but actually making them, you know, believable and and lifelike character that actually can comes alive in front of your reader's eyes. So let's kick it off with what actually makes a good book. Well, as you know then from the, the title of this course, it's characters. You know, the characters live long after the, the movies or the book ends. You know, take for example the two likeable characters in the, the, the old Star Wars movies, the Han Solo and Chewbacca. You know, they lived long after the, the movie had ended. Um, and because they were so likeable, um, you know, the kids were role playing and, you know, buying costumes and you know, pretending that they were Han Solo or Chewbacca and stuff like that. So even though, like, they had come from the Star Wars storyline, those characters kind of stepped out and became more than just um, a collection of words on the page. Or even the cast from Friends, like, um, the cast became so believable. Like, it didn't matter what storyline was, even if we can't remember some of the episodes, we know we can remember some of the the mannerisms that um, Joey had or the way Phoebe sang and things like that that made those characters so likeable and made them more than just uh, um, than just a couple of people in a, in, a, in a TV series. And another thing about characters is they can save a bland storyline. Now, take for example like some of the recent Marvel movies, whether you like them or you don't like them, some of the storylines are a bit kind of, um, you know, they're not, they might be a little on the weak side and it's the characters that kind of you know, draw your attention to it and keep you going and seeing how they go till the end. Because, um, you know, if, if you have kind of weak characters and a good storyline, um, it doesn't work that way because at the end of the day, your characters or your readers are actually and your viewers are actually latching onto the characters you're creating. So if we don't actually like the characters, uh, we don't believe in them and, you know, we just don't want to spend time with them. It doesn't matter how good your storyline is, you know, it doesn't matter how many plot twists of explosions you have or car chases. Um, you know yourself that some of the Hollywood movies, like, uh, there's a lot that comes out recently that have been just filled with just special effects and just, you know, explosions and car chases and airplane chases and space or craft changes, sorry, chases. And, you know, it adds nothing to it. It's the characters that we like, you know, it's the, the characters that, that make a movie good or a book good. And another an mistake that I see, I see, um, first time authors making is actually thinking that the plot comes first and that the characters come second um but then they find it too late that they, they don't want to be part of it um you know you might think that you have this script storyline and then you have a character you're going to put in and you find out then that the character doesn't want to be in it now i know it sounds weird that like a figment of your imagination could actually decide and say well you know i don't want to be part of the storyline because you know, I, I don't fit in here, I don't agree with this, what I'm supposed to do here, or I'm supposed to go there, or that decision I'm supposed to make doesn't make sense. Because like a fictional character, like how can an imaginary character that, you know, that only exists in your mind, um, how can they make um, such big decisions like that? How can they actually take control of a storyline and, you know, disagree with decisions you're making or things that you want them to do that they just don't agree with? So like, um, and yet you know that it's true, you know, um, for example, like even taking a wimpy character, you know, if I was picturing a wimpy character now, you know, I could never imagine him, you know, um, bursting into a ballroom, you know, punching the bully's lights out and then grabbing his lost love and dancing the night away because, you know, you know yourself that that a wimpy character that that wouldn't be them, you know, um, because, you know, it's, it's weak writing, like, if, you can imagine if you had a wimpy character or a kind of weak kind of character and he knows that the, the bully is inside and dancing with his, the love of his life, you know, he's going to come to that door, he's going to make a decision, oh, if I go in here, what's going to happen, am I going to get punched out? He's probably going to walk right up and then at the last second just divert away because you know yourself that if you know that character, there's no way he's going to do that. So if you had written a storyline saying the wimpy kid walks into the ballroom walks up punches the 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 bully out takes the love of his life away for a dance and kiss and then it's happily ever after you're not going to believe that 
you know, because it it's, you know, that character, he's not going to do those things. He's going to fumble, he's going to stutter, he's probably going to fall over, he's going to do something silly that it's going to be in line with what that character actually is. And um, so apart from that, then there's other actually things then that actually going to, we're going to look at today um, that are going to, you know, to, to fill out your character and give you ideas of what a character, your character will actually do and what would they think and why will they make the decisions they're going to make. So rather than actually cramming your character into a storyline that just doesn't suit them, that's, you know, that uh, isn't right for them, it's the best place to start with is your characters. And even though I have this uh, system here in kind of an alphabetical format, there is no kind of, you know, um, A is the most important one and Z is the least important one. I've just made it up this way just to make it just easy just to, to look over and that you can just dip in and out and use some of the, um, you know, some of the areas to work on your characters. So let's kick it off with A for appearance. So if you imagine your characters, um, and really well, they're going to have a physical appearance. You know, they're not just going to be this kind of, um, although it's easy to, to see a character as just being a collection of words, you know, in their world, they're actually a, a, going to be a physical entity that are going to interact with, you know, the things around them, the people that are around them. So their appearance is going to affect how they actually are going to be in their book. Um, take it for example, somebody with a blemish free face. You know, and he, he, the, that character was living in a romance novel. You know that character could easily start at the first chapter and get to the end of the book, and they could easily pick a mate. You know, that have no problems because because of the blemish-free face. Um, you know, they would be attractive to other characters. They would, you know, turn heads and things like that. But then you also know that maybe a soldier coming home from war with a badly burned face, if he was living in the same romance storyline that his storyline was completely different he would have challenges because of that blemish free face you know he he might uh, make people turn people off um and his appearance is going to affect how he's going to relate to the people you know maybe he might stay to himself um he mightn't put himself as forward as much as a person with a blemish you know free complexion or um figure like if your character was obese, you know, um, how would that affect him? You know, moving in the world, interacting with people, how would his confidence levels be? You know, even just moving around and physically, like if, say, for example, your character was an over overweight um, police officer, you know, he'd have difficulty getting in and out of cars if he's seen um, a convict, you know, breaking out in a sprint and racing down the street. There's no way he's going to think of running after him you know his first uh, first thing he's going to think is i've got to get a car i've got to get something that's going to get me to up to that person and because of their appearance it's going to affect how they think and how they interact with the you know the the surroundings so say for example even the obese officer again you know if, if somebody's climbing over a fence and he's just leapt over it there's no way he's going to actually just just jump over that fence after him you know squeezing through air conditioning ducts or you know things like that they're all going to affect your character so by you know taking into account your uh, you know your character's appearance you know the physical looks you know the their body shape whether they're tall small you know skinny fat um their hair color you know the type of hair the color of their eyes all of those things are going to affect someone like so for example if somebody was a particular color you know how would other people treat them uh, particular color of eyes, you know, things like that all will kind of go into how the pair, the character is in your book. So then too, it's easy to jump, you know, to, to the Hollywood kind of formula of, you know, your character's got to have perfect teeth, she's got to have a perfect figure, you know, when she walks down the street, men are just going to wolf whistle after her and watch her walking down the street and, you know, can't take their eyes off them. But you know yourself that that's not the you know, look out the window today and you're going to find people that have, you know, you're going to find more love handles than you're going to find six packs. And, you know, there's there's not as many people with perfect teeth, like the Hollywood smiles and stuff like that. There's all these kind of, it's not realistic. And by using your character's appearance and making them, giving them more of a kind of realistic appearance, or maybe even using that appearance then to, you know, make them stand out 
it can make a big difference to um, building your character. So then if you take it on to B for backstory, you know, if you look at, say, from this moment, from your birth to this present moment, you know, the things you've done, said and heard has made you the person that you are. And then too, as well, from that, you know, we something that maybe the teacher had said to you maybe years ago in a classroom is still stuck with you and it's made you live your life the way you are living it. Maybe uh, your parents made an offhand remark, didn't pay much attention to what they were said to you. It's maybe said that you were clumsy doing that. And because of that idea yeah, has stuck with you and you've lived your life with that idea that you're clumsy at doing that thing. And maybe you've never tried it. Uh, maybe you hate it. And it's all come about from your, you know, from your backstory and how you've lived your life up to this present moment. From all those little things that you've seen and you've heard and you've done. And... You know, I, 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 if, if you're like me, like any TV show or a book that I'm reading, if it hasn't got believable characters, you know, you've lost me. So, like, working on your backstory is critical to making characters that um, stand out. And, you know, not avoiding that, you know, it does take a little bit of work. But it's interesting, too, because from your backstory, you can find things you can actually use to plot in your story to, to make a, a great storyline for that character. You know, things maybe that come up in the backstory you could use against them, you know, to, to raise some conflict and things like that. And it's well worth doing because you're going to find more about your character from building the backstory. You know, what makes that person, that person that they are today? You know, what if they didn't hear that thing that was said? What if their best friend didn't go away with their girlfriend, you know, and break their heart? Um, and then again, too, like the character that you even looking at your own life, you know, the person that's listening to this recording today isn't going to be the same person that's going to be listening to this recording tomorrow. Something's going to happen to you today that's going to make you different. You're going to hear something, something good maybe is going to happen to you. Maybe you've released a book and readers love it. So the person that has listened to this, you know, who who, who is listening to this audio now or in the video isn't going to be the exact same person that's going to be tomorrow. And it's going to be the same as your characters. The characters that you have on page one isn't going to be the same character that's going to be at the end page because you know all these little things are going to alter them and change them so not only is the backstory important like from starting off and building the character from scratch you're going to find that your character then by the end of the book is going to be a completely different one from the start and if they're not well then there's a reason you know it's something that you need to to, to go back and look at because that character shouldn't be the same at the end of the book you know they're going to do something they're going to find courage from somewhere before for they never had it before. And then that, you know, that character isn't going to be the same one at the end. You know, they're going to believe in themselves where they didn't believe in themselves before. Somebody's going to say something to them, a mentor or whatever. And that thought is going to stick with them from that moment right through the book and possibly into other books that they, they're going to have. So working on your backstory is, is a great way of building your character. But just bear in mind that, you know, your story too is the backstory because at the end of the book, that book is the backstory of that character as well. So everything that's gone on in that book then is going to add to what that character is. So that character is constantly growing and growing and growing. And, you know, the various ways of doing it. You can interview the character for, there's a lot of techniques and things you can find on the internet maybe. And um, like interview lists where you can just through a lot of questions and you can find out more and more about your character. You know, even the simple, just even the simple, the, the five W's like who, where, what, when and why. And just use that when you're speaking to your character. You know, why would that character do that? When would he, you know, why would he go there? You know, why? what made him think that way? You know, if, if he if he had a hatred of, you know, a fear of swimming, you know, why has he got that fear of swimming? What happened in his past to make him think that way? So working your way backwards then will give you just ideas of what made that person, actually the person that they are on page one. You know, you might only see them on page one, but there's a lot more had gone into that character to, to be the person that they are on page one. So working on your backstory will make um, a fuller and more believable character. And then we've got C then for conflict. You know, the more conflict your character goes through, the more we learn about them. You know, there's no conflict, there's no growth. Like take for example with these two storylines, like Joe wants to go to the coffee shop for a cup of coffee. So Joe goes to the coffee shop, gives the lady the, gives his order, gives the lady his money, and he walks away with his coffee. So what do we learn about Joe from that? You know, all we learn from Joe is that Joe was just a normal person who just likes coffee, 
and he has the money to pay for coffee and he's going in and he pays his first cup and Joe walks out and that's all we know about Joe. But then what if we change the storyline? You know, what if we, Joe got a phone call and said, Joe, you've got to get to this coffee shop because there's a burner phone waiting for you. And on that burner phone, you're going to find the location of your kidnapped daughter. So all of a sudden now, this isn't the same Joe that's been in the previous one. You know, Joe has to get to that ca- that location. He has to get to that coffee shop to get to his kidnapped daughter. He's also got five minutes that he has to get there. So who knows what's going to happen between Joe getting that phone call and five minutes. In the five minutes that he has to get that phone, is he going to get caught in a traffic jam? You know, does he know where the coffee shop is? What if somebody else has picked up the phone before he and just handed it in? Maybe the phone's not there anymore. So as you can see, like building conflict, that is going to learn more about Joe. In the first stage, we just know Joe likes coffee. There's not much we're going to know about it. But in the second storyline, like Joe's going to race for that phone. But what are we going to find out about Joe? You know, what skills does Joe have? You know, is he ex-army? Things like that. Um, you know, can he call on that experience? And what if Joe's just a simple school teacher who just, you know, your average normal person who just, this is just totally out of the blue. You know, why would somebody take Joe's daughter? So from that conflict, then we can actually, you know, build more and more into your character. Because like, what 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 are we going to find out about Joe from the first instance? Not much, apart from his love of coffee. But in the second instance, we're going to find out then a lot more about Joe. You know, what does Joe need to be? What kind of person does Joe need to become to become the person that he needs to be to rescue his daughter? What if he doesn't get the phone? You know, what's he going to do then? So putting conflict in your storyline is going to change your character. You know, like the, the backstory conflict like that is going to add far more to your to your character and by the end of the book that character is going to be just completely different from the start of the book you know what kind of character like by the end of the book joe's going to be probably standing with maybe his arm around his daughter and he's hugging and kissing her but that joe at the end of the book isn't the the, the character that was the start of the book you know what did joe have to go through to, to do that what did he do maybe he'd done things that you know that he hated doing that he never thought he'd ever see himself doing maybe he thought he'd never ever killed somebody and then joe had pulls the trigger on the killer on the kidnapper and kills him to get his daughter so putting conflict into your storyline or even your character building can bring out more far 